Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Beninen and for today's video we're going to be doing another sunscreen ranking. Today we'll be ranking all of the mineral sunscreens I've tried in the last year. I've already done full reviews on all of these sunscreens. They are on my channel. I will be linking them down in the description box and in the cards. Feel free to click on those if you want more information. And I'll also include some links to all of the products in the description box. Keep in mind that the way that I'm ranking this is based off of my skin type. I have oily, acne prone, sensitive skin. So what I'm saying you may not agree with if you have a different skin type or just a different preference in general. The first category is put it on my face. These are holy grail um, sunscreens, things that I love. Love the way it feels for me, will continue to use. The next one is mid, so probably won't repurchase this, but I might finish it or I might give it away to someone. Not for me, maybe for you. This is a category for products that are not for me, but you might like them. And then the last category is trash. These are complete garbage sunscreens I don't like, will not repurchase, will not recommend to other people. The first one is the Olay Regenerous Minerals Sunscreen. This is a hydrating moisturizer SPF 30. The price is $28.99. I got mine from Target. I think they sell it at Walmart, Ulta, you can get it on Amazon, and then you get 1.7 fluid ounces. The active ingredient in this one is zinc oxide 17.5%, so it's a mineral sunscreen. And I'm putting this one in the mid category. Uh, I like that it's fragrance free. When I wore it with normal skincare, it kind of had a slight cast and it started to stick to my hair. The finish is a glowier finish. Um, I feel like it wore better with bare skin where the cast kind of reduced to really no to very minimal cast. And it works best if you add it in layers rather than slathering it all on at once. I liked the finish of this one. I feel like it wasn't too oily, not too shiny. I did find that it was breaking up on the corners of my nose and my mouth, so then not the best with makeup. Um, but besides that, it looked fine. I'd say that this is best for people with normal to dry skin. But if you have oily skin, you might like it more in the winter when you're not super oily, which is when I used it the most. So this is gonna go in the mid category because I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. I have used it a couple of times. I just have to make sure that I'm careful with this one and how I apply it um, so that it's not looking ghostly. And also this one I do recommend to people but I like to give the caveat that if you have a deeper skin tone than mine you'll probably see more of a cast than I do. So that's our first one in the mid category. The next one is the Native Mineral Face Lotion Unscented. This is an SPF 30. I got it for $16 on the Native website and you get 1.7 fluid ounces. This sunscreen is not water resistant and it comes in different scents. So they have an unscented one and a coconut slash pineapples scent to it. They also have a body sunscreen. I wasn't able to test that one out. I've only tried the one for the face. With normal skincare, it was like a slight cast depending on the lighting. So it would look good in my bathroom lighting, but then I'd go to like the window in the sunlight and you could see the slight cast there more. I did like that it applies pretty easily and dries down very quickly. This one settles in better than the Olay one. Some people might find that there's some residue with the Olay one, whereas this one completely dries down, which is nice. I found that it works best when I had a moisturizer underneath because with bare skin, it was way too drying. It started to pill up. Um, it was hard to spread out. So it just works better when you have other products on your face. And then reapplication is not the best. I mean, overall, I think mineral sunscreens with reapplication is not going to be your friend because if you put more layers of a mineral sunscreen, you're gonna get more of the cast. So reapplication was a no-go. With makeup, it looked good initially, but then it started to create these like dry patches. And if you have any sort of hair or dry patches on your face, this sunscreen will start to cling to it and kind of enhance those dry spots and it'll stick to your hair as well. So because it pills up, because it really only works with normal skin, because it kind of stung to my dry spots and made me look, it's not like the cast was really bad, but it just made me look like 
land. I don't know. I don't know what the word is for it. I'm going to put this one in the trash category. There's just too much tweaking that I had to do to make it work for my skin and I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending it. The next one is the Elta MD UV Clear Facial Sunscreen. This one is an SPF 46. It retails for $37. I got it on the Derm Store website. They also sell it on the Elta website and you get 1.7 fluid ounces. This one does not have any water resistant claims. The active ingredients are 9% zinc oxide. 7.5% octanoxate. It also includes niacinamide and hyaluronic acid. Lots of you guys love the sunscreen. I absolutely despise it. It's going into the garbage. The reason for that is although it's a very lightweight sunscreen, it's not very moisturizing. I found that when I put it on normal or bare skin, I started to get pilling in either way. I would have to rub it and really pat and be gentle with it and that's just annoying for me to do. So the pilling was annoying. Also, for some reason, when I recorded this, you could not see the cast as much on camera, but you could see it in person and that was in all the lighting. So the cast, I guess it's very dependent. It does work with makeup, but you have to be careful and you can't do any like swiping motions or you're gonna get the pilling you have to do some padding. Um, so again, lots of caveats to make this one work. I really don't think it's best for anyone and I don't recommend it to other people, so it's gonna go in the trash. The next two are from Isden. I believe Isden is actually a Korean brand, so maybe I should have put it in the Asian sunscreen ranking video, but I forgot, so it's gonna be in here. Both of these are mineral sunscreens. The first one is the Isden Airy Fotona Ageless Ultralight Emulsion SPF 50. This is their tinted mineral sunscreen. It retails for $66, you get 3.4 fluid ounces, and this one is also water resistant for 40 minutes. Active ingredient is the same, zinc oxide, 11%. So the tint is very light and the formula is very liquidy. I did test it out with both a moisturizer and without, and I'd say with normal skincare, it goes on with a cast, but the cast kind of tones down after like 15 minutes, so that's a little bit better. Um, if you wear it with bare skin, I feel like you look even more gray with bare skin than you do with a moisturizer, and with bare skin, it felt drying again. Um, so not a huge fan with that. Makeup wore really well with this. It was pretty flawless and it sat very well with makeup. Um, this one is best for people with oily skin. The finish is, it's not really matte, but it's very oil controlling. At least it was for me. It's definitely made for people with a lighter skin complexion. So the reason I'm putting it in not for me, maybe for you, is mostly because of the tint. I didn't mind the finish. I thought the finish was fine and I felt like it works well for oily skin people. Is did Photo Air Fotona Actinica. It is an SPF 50 plus. This is their untinted version. This one retails for $55. You get 3.4 fluid ounces and it's water resistant for 40 minutes. The active ingredient is zinc oxide 11%. I don't like the sunscreen. Mm -mm. This one's gonna go in the trash. I found that this one does leave a cast. The cast isn't as bad if you put it on bare skin, but if you have normal skincare under, for some reason there was more of a cast. Also with normal skincare, I found that it was shinier, reapplication was terrible, as with all of these pretty much. And then I tried to wear it with bare skin and the cast was a little bit better, but then it became drying. So either way you wear it, you're gonna have some issues. It wore fine with makeup, but I had to apply a lot of foundation to cover up the cast. For that reason, I'm gonna put it in trash and it works for very, very, very light skin. It kind of gives like a grayish cast, so you'd have to be almost like porcelain <laughs> For it to work but I guess there's a very specific person that it's made for but I think if you have any kind of color in your skin it's not gonna work okay the next one I don't know if I want to put this in here because the sunscreen has been pulled from their website but I've heard that it might be making a comeback so I might just leave it in here it's the Bergen Dermatology Sheer Joy sunscreen this is an SPF 50 plus retails for $36 1.7 ounces they don't make any water resistant or sweat resistant claims. The active ingredients are 14.7% zinc oxide and 3.5% titanium dioxide. It's going in the put it on my face category with the caveat that I only use this one in the winter. I don't think it works in the summer, but for the winter, I love it. It was one that I kept going back to. I'm hoping that if they do refinish this, the cast stays to a non-existent, but I have a feeling that 
it's gonna look casty when they bring it back but <laughs> the finish is very hydrating it's very moisturizing lotion it does have a like classic sunscreen smell to it and it does burn my eyes and it does get slightly oily after wearing it for a few hours um, and you do start to feel like some of the residue but when I wore it with bare skin I liked the way that this felt there the residue was really non-existent it wasn't as oily and it just looks it looks like a nice glow with bare skin. It wears fine underneath makeup, but it did start to separate a little bit uh, around my nose and my creases. But yeah, so I'm gonna leave this in the put it on my face. If they bring it back and reformulate, I may have different opinions, but we'll talk about that if that happens. The next one isn't really a sunscreen. It's more of a foundation with sunscreen in it. It is the Tower 28 Sunny Days SPF 30 Tinted Sunscreen Foundation. It retails for $30 and it is fragrance free. The active ingredient in here is 12.7% non-nano zinc oxide. They market it as a tinted sunscreen, but to me, a tinted sunscreen is something that's like very sheer, very light, and you put it on like you put on sunscreen. This one, you put it on like you put it on foundation, so I wouldn't even really call it a sunscreen. It's a foundation that happens to have a little bit of sunscreen in it, but most of the time, all the time actually, when I wear this, I wear a separate sunscreen underneath, and then I put this on top like I would wear a normal foundation or concealer or whatever. The color I got it in is Topanga, which was the second to last deepest shade. This one has the deep with warm undertones. I did like that it wears well with other products and the finish is a natural to glowy. I can put my powder on and then set it down and it gets to like that perfect natural finish without being shiny. I'm gonna put this in the put it on my face category mostly because I have used it a ton. But if I were to rate it as if it was a sunscreen, I would put it probably lower down below because you need a lot of foundation to get the SPF and by the time you put that much on you just look very cakey and it doesn't look good so I don't wear it as I would wear a sunscreen I wear it like I would wear a foundation next one is the black girl sunscreen make it hybrid mineral combo sunscreen it's an SPF 50 retails for $18.99 on the black girl sunscreen website and at Target and you get three fluid ounces. Active ingredients are homosalate 10%, octosalate 5%, octocrylene 5%, and zinc oxide 5%. And it has aloe, lavender, and shea butter in it. This is a combo sunscreen. It has the mineral filter with the zinc oxide, but it has some chemical filters blended in. The reason I didn't like this sunscreen is because the fragrance is very strong. It smells like an extremely perfumey lavender scent. When I wore it on normal skin, I just found that it was hard to rub in. It left a slight cast depending on the lighting. I found that it was sticking to my hair. The finish is very natural slash dewy, which is okay. Um, but I found that it was slightly drying for me, even with a moisturizer underneath. When I wore it with bare skin, the cast was less gray. It became even more drying. So I really think this is one that you need a moisturizer underneath, regardless of your skin type. It does work fine with makeup, but just overall, this one was not for me. I'm gonna put it in the not for me, maybe for you. Next one is another combo sunscreen. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Sunscreen. It's an SPF 50, retails for $34. You get 50 milliliters. I think I got this one at Sephora. Active ingredients are homosalate 8.5% octosalate 5%, octocrylene 8.5%, and then the mineral part of it is the zinc oxide 12.1%. This also contains niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, and aloe. I thought I was gonna love this sunscreen, but I didn't. <laughs> so here's why. The finish of it is glowy, because it's called the watermelon glow it's in the name so expect glow um, it feels hydrating I found that it was very pilly you could reduce the pilling by kind of patting it in and that works fine I also found that there was a very ever so minor slight cast not anything crazy we've definitely seen worse here on this channel but the cast kind of dependent on the lighting here um, so then I wore it with bare skin thinking that it would help with the cast and I feel like you could still see the slight blue sheen initially when you first apply it and then when you let it sit the cast is 
a little bit less. It does work nicely under makeup. I feel like it gives you that nice glow from within with the makeup. Just overall, I think it works best for people with dry to dehydrated skin to give you that nice glow. Oily skin, you might feel like it's too glowy. But for me, it was glowy, but not greasy, which is nice, and the pilling. So I'm gonna put this in the not for me, maybe for you, because if you have a lighter complexion, I think you would like it. And if you have dry skin or dehydrated skin, I think you would like it. You'll also like it if you are someone that doesn't mind like putting on your sunscreen gently, like rubbing it and patting it, taking your time. That's not me. I like to slather things on and go. <laughs> so this one is not for me, but it may be for you. All right, a couple more. The next one is the Jack Black Oil Free Sun Guard. This is an SPF 45. Retails for $21, four fluid ounces, and water resistant for 80 minutes. Active ingredients are octanoxate 7.5%, octasilate 3%, and zinc oxide 8%. So this is sort of a combo sunscreen and it does contain some vitamin C. This one, again, is a not for me, maybe for you type sunscreen. When I wore it on bare skin, I felt like, again, the cast kind of depended on the lighting. It wasn't really a bad cast. It was just kind of like a slight cast to it. The finish is a natural matte, which is great for my oily girls. I think you guys would really like this one. And also it didn't get very shiny after wearing it for a couple hours, which is awesome. When I wore it with my normal skincare and like a moisturizer, I found that it was, the cast was better. It was like a slightly to no cast um, when you initially wore it, but then it started to show up after some time. So, and it didn't cause me any eye irritation, no breakouts. So it was just the cast depending on the lighting. So I'm gonna put this in not for me, maybe for you. I didn't really love the cast for my face, but I liked the finish of it. The last two are from Color Science. They are the Color Science Sun Forget total protection face shield sunscreens I tried it in the matte formula and then also in the classic they are both in SPF 50 both of these retail for $39 you get 1.8 fluid ounces and they are both water resistant for 40 minutes they both contain zinc oxide 12% and some niacinamide the difference is the matte obviously has a matte finish and the classic has like a normal type finish to it. The matte one has a light tint to it. It's marketed for people with medium to deep skin tones. I don't know why because I consider myself with deep skin tone and I had a definite cast to it. Um, I did like that the finish is sort of like a moderate matte finish so it's not too drying but it's controls your oils. When I wore it with a moisturizer in my normal skincare, the cast was absolutely terrible. It was very gray. Um, the formula started to pill up. It started sticking in my hair. It was collecting in my dry spots. But the good thing is it did stay matte for two hours when I came back to see how it looked and reapply. Since the white cast is so bad, it was almost like impossible to cover up with makeup. You had to put a lot of product on to reduce the cast, at least for me. If you have medium to deep, like they are claiming, I would not say it's for you. It's definitely for people with fair skin. That being said though, I'm gonna put it in the not for me, maybe for you. <laughs> and you're probably surprised by this, but honestly, I loved the formula. I liked the way it felt on my face, but the cast was crazy so the cast does not work for me and probably won't work for people with deeper complexions but the finish if you have oily skin it might be for you the classic on the other hand is gonna go in the trash because this one had a white cast and it didn't stick to my hair as much as the other one um, the finish I'd say is a natural to matte finish and it's not drying I had to wear even more makeup to cover up the cast because it was worse it does work for oily skin I think it's more for like people with normal skin tone. But if you have dry skin, you're gonna ne definitely need to wear a moisturizer. I just didn't like this one altogether. I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't think that it was oil controlling. I didn't really like the finish of this as much and I didn't like the cast. So it's gonna go in trash. Those are all of the mineral sunscreens I've tried in the last year. If you guys have tried any of these and you love them, let me know. If you tried them and you hated them, let me know. If you've tried them and you disagree with the way that I ranked them, also let me know. As always, I'm always looking for a nice mineral sunscreen that doesn't have a cast and works for people with deeper complexions so if you have any recommendation for those leave them down in the comment section below I think it's just very hard to find and then you find one and then they discontinue it and then you're back to square one if you guys have liked the way that I rank these sunscreens and like more of these compilation videos let me know give this video a thumbs up 
and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye!